Hi, my name is Lena and welcome to my channel. And let's talk about the books I've read so far in 2018. I failed to do my January wrap up and then I thought I will do it uh, in my February wrap up and then I failed to do my February wrap up. Um, so I see no point in waiting for my March wrap up. Let's talk about these books right now. Um, there is a tendency uh, for, me, for me to bite more than I can chew, I guess. So, uh, as for the books I have finished already, uh, I have finished uh, the third book of Dragon Riders of Burn trilogy by Anne McCaffrey, um, The White Dragon. And I have separate videos about it where I tried not to uh, give you any spoilers, um, where I try to not uh, give any summary, but to talk about the world building and about the premise of the story. Well, anyway, um, this story is a bit different to the uh, previous two stories. It's kind of a coming of age story about uh, Ruth, uh, the white dragon, who is the smallest dragon on Pern and about his rider. And this story includes a lot of different things. Uh, it includes a sea exploration, it includes a land exploration, it includes an archaeological uh, excavation. So the pace is a bit uneven. Nevertheless, it's very interesting and the world building is excellent and the characters are good. And uh, But this time I think uh, Anne McCaffrey, she kept in mind her children and her children's friends and she, I guess she was wanted to uh, teach them a bit about the world, uh, probably. Um, so it was a different kind of story. Uh, and it was a bit unevenly paced. But I prefer Anne McCaffrey at a very high pace uh, because I think she is a queen of uh, climaxes and her first two books were excellent from this point of view. They were extremely high paced. They were very entertaining and uh, they contained a great deal of climaxes. But nevertheless, the third book was very interesting and very entertaining, but very different. And then I read uh, a non-fiction book about learning languages. I read it in Russian, but fortunately I found it on Goodreads uh, in English translation. It was a book by uh, Kato Lomb, uh, Polyglot, How I Learn Languages. It was a very interesting book. Um, it contained some very funny stories about uh, her being a polyglot. Um, the author is a Hungarian uh, woman and she knew more than 25 languages. Um, the book uh, didn't contain any practical advice, but it contained some general advices and it was a very pleasant read. I suppose uh, Kato Lomb was a very interesting person and had a great sense of humor. So those general advices uh, are that you should practice every all four aspects of the language. So you should practice your speaking, your reading, your writing, and your listening. And for because if you don't practice something, some of these four aspects, you won't be any good in it. And I can vouch for that because after I have been reading, uh, I had been reading uh, for a year uh, unadopted books in English language, I got myself an audiobook. It was some story by, I think it was A Body in the Library by Agatha Christie. And I was horrified because it was so difficult for me to understand it. It was almost impossible for me to understand it. So you need, you should practice all four 
aspects at once. You shouldn't um, leave something uh, late. For example, when you say, well, I will uh, learn all the grammar and then I will be try speaking. You shouldn't do that. that you should do it all at once. And, um, well, uh, the other, um, <laughs> I don't, uh, it's more than spoilers, I suppose, <laughs> but, uh, the book uh, actually is very interesting and very pleasant read. And all those general advices are usually given uh, if you are participating in online conference, online se seminar about learning languages. They are always given to you right away for free. Um, so another uh, advice that is given on this is, during these seminars is that you need to practice a language you are learning every day, that you need to find 15 minutes every day to practice this language. And it tells you how lazy we became because Katalom, she says, if you want result, if you want to see progress, give me 10 hours a week, not 15 minutes a day. So it was a very pleasant read. Uh, and very interesting read. Uh, then I read The Selmarillion by Tolkien. It was a body read with Lukash from Lukash's books. I will leave a link to his channel into the info box. Um, I have several videos about it. Um, where all I did, I, I'm afraid I gave you a um, summary because I uh, couldn't find anything else to talk about. I didn't know what to talk about, uh, apart from my personal impressions and the summary. It was quite difficult to get past chapter 14 because uh, up to this point it mostly world building, but then uh, myth mythology starts as uh, several uh, very interesting stories I told them after that. I like I like this book. I enjoy very much uh, Tolkien's writing style. But so far, uh, the Lord of the Ring is my favorite. But I will certainly certainly read the Silmarillion probably more than once, and we will see. Maybe this one will become my favorite. By the way, I wanted to ask: uh, there are books uh, by Tolkien. Uh, for example, his translations of Beowulf and notes notes on this poem and uh, his translations of uh, King Arthur stories and notes on them. Have you read any of them? Are they any good? Uh, please let me know in the comments section. Um, then, <laughs> then. I read uh, the first book of uh, the Brother Gwynedd Quartet and it was called um, Sunrise in the West by Edith Pargeta, aka Alice Peters, my favorite uh, mystery writer. I enjoyed it. Uh, I enjoy very much her Brother Cutfell stories. And before I read this first book, I looked for some reviews and I cannot provide you a link unfortunately but one of the reviewers said that the book was extremely boring that he read a book on the same subject by different author and the book was much more interesting but I thought I love Alice Peters and I have never read anything on the subject so I will probably enjoy it but when I started reading, when I have read, when I read uh, a half of the book, and when I finished the first book, I understood what he meant. Uh, so the book is, uh, the book is about Wales and about four princes of women. So 
the story takes place in 13th century in uh, Wales and England, and it's about Wales itself and about four princes of Gwynedd. But they are not main characters. Uh, so the main character of the story is Samson, who is a son, an illegitimate son, of a servant uh, of their mother. So he was perfectly placed to know them all and to tell the story. Um, we are said about his uh, childhood, about his abusive father and how his mother uh, managed to hide him in a monastery from his father, stepfather and how in this monastery he learned uh, write and read in ancient Greek, in Latin, uh, in English and in Welsh. So he became a perfect candidate uh, for a secretary to brothers of Gwynedd, uh, to Llewellyn, <laughs> um, the brother he adores. So he is perfectly placed to tell us the story of Gwynedd and of his uh, favorite brother of Llewellyn. But nothing happens to him himself. So we don't have story to our main character. So it all, all of this character development that going on around him, they are all great, they are all excellent, but they are all world building because he is kind of, sort of, uh, taking part in their stories. He doesn't have a story of his own until he meets a girl and falls in love with her. So it's not much of a story. It's a story about Wales. Um, um, it's the first book tells us um, what happens um, when the princes are children, uh, before some princes are born. For example, it tells us about the grandfather of the princess of Llewellyn, who is also called Llewellyn. Um, and by the way, I'm sorry for the pronunciation of the Welsh names. So, uh, this prince, he has uh, two sons, an elder son, uh, Griffith, and the second son, David. And by the Welsh law, Griffith, uh, although he has a different mother, he should uh, become the heir of Llewellyn, he should become prince of Gwynedd. But uh, his father chose the second son, probably because of some political reasons, because the mother of the second son, David, she is um, a, a, mine, a relation to an English crown. She is an illegitimate daughter of uh, King John. So it's probably political reasons. Probably David was more suited uh, to uh, inherit his father's realm. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Anyway, so it almost led to civil war, uh, but uh, during his life, uh, his father and his brother David they took Griffith and his eldest son Owen prisoners and they kept them, well, in custody. They <laughs> held, them, held them in prison, kept them in prison. So it, it wasn't, I suppose, particularly good for the family. Um, the wife couldn't see her husband and couldn't see her elder brother and didn't know what will happen to her uh, younger sons. So, uh, the story is basically about uh, Llewellyn, 
the second son of Griffith, trying to unite Wales and to fight English crown. Um, so far he wants to uh, win back Welsh lands. So it's uh, the first book has quite a lot of historical details, quite a lot of conquests. Um, the character development is great, uh, is excellent. The younger brother David, I can picture him. So it's it's a very good book, but it's very slow paced because it has no story for the main character. Well, we will see uh, what uh, other uh, three books will be like. And um, next, I have read half of the Aryan's story about conquests of Alexander the Great. I read it in Russian, so this is an English version. I have both an English and a Russian version, and I thought that Russian version will be easier for me to read. And now I understand why everything that I remember about Alexander the Great, uh, everything I read about Alexander the Great is kind of reads as fiction. Whatever sources Aaron use, whatever biographies Aaron use, and whatever materials those biographies use, I think <laughs> those biographies used uh, the <laughs> the guys. I'm sorry. The uh, conquest of Alexander the Great was very well documented because there were people who uh, kept a diary of the conquest and there were a lot of um, orders put to paper, there was a lot of documents, um, there was an archive of documents uh, that traveled with the army and that's why uh, this story of Alexander, this biography of Alexander looks very strange for me. Um, it looks like there is a figure of Alexander and there is a big gray cloud behind him and from this big cloud uh, some person appears to become a governor in some part, in some conquered city or to take prisoners uh, to some part or to uh, take an, the old soldiers back home. Uh, so I guess this, uh, this is because they used those written orders. We have known nothing about Alexander, about his day, about his, re his regime, about his friends, about his relationships. All these uh, letters that he wrote to his uh, mother and to the general he left uh, back home. Uh, I haven't uh, I haven't read about them yet or they are not included in this biography at all. And those this biography is mostly, mythological stories, myths about Alexandra. It's very strange. <laughs> it was very interesting. It wasn't enjoyable. Uh, the style is very, very easy on your eyes. It's very easy to read and it's quite light and quite pleasant. But when he conquered a, a fortress, a city that 
refused him, that opposed him. He would destroy it completely. He would kill all the men. He would sell all women and children into slavery. So it's not exactly an enjoyable read, but it's very interesting read and nevertheless, and I haven't finished it. I am yet to finish it. And then in February, this book I haven't finished in January. And in February, I read three volumes of And Quiet Flows the Dawn by Mikhail Sholokov. And I failed to finish the fourth volume. I have I'm one third in, and I'm very tired of it. It's a very good written story. It's excellently written. Apart from the somewhat cliche portraying of Bolsheviks in uh, first and second volume in the very beginning. It's a very well written book. It's, uh, but this subject is very grim and I am tired of reading uh, about Cossacks uh, killing each other and in great box. So there are Cossacks, it's about civil war in Russia. The first one was about the life before World War One, about customs of the Cossacks, and uh, it, was it was quite enjoyable from one part, um, because <laughs> it was about the life back then, it was very interesting and was very enjoyable, but I have never realized uh, what Cossacks actually were. Um, <laughs> you know, it's uh, one thing when you read about Alexander the Great, uh, when he conquers a city, when his soldiers loot uh, robes the city and they um, carry whatever they can carry with them, uh, gold, uh, jewels, whatever they can uh, take. Mm. And it's another thing uh, to read about Cossacks doing the same. Conquering this, uh, the land and robbing uh, the population. It was a custom, it was a tradition, it was uh, a usual thing. But it's very difficult for me uh, to read about that because I am three part Cossack, so three of my grandparents were Cossacks. <laughs> I'm not proud of this. <laughs> well, and I have never realized that Cossacks uh, were actually a nation. I don't think, I, I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> well, nevertheless, <laughs> it tells about World War II, it tells about revolution, it tells about the split that uh, came after the revolution, that some Cossacks, they were uh, supporting the Red Army, the more uh, poor Cossacks, they were supporting the Red Army. But some Cossacks, they were for independence, they wanted to separate from Russia, they wanted to be a nation again. A, separate nation. Um, and they didn't uh, actually, they were opposing the Russian, the Red Army, but they they had to support uh, the White Guards, but they were not happy about <laughs> the supporting the White Guards, because the White Guards were mainly Russian, and they uh, not planned, but they would appoint Russian generals to Cossack army. They were not happy about it all. And they were killing each other in box. They were not taking prisoners. It's a very difficult, it's a very hard read, and I'm tired of reading about this all. Um, but I will continue reading it in March. Now I alternated between uh, Sholokhov Shol and Quiet Flo Flows the Dawn and uh, my favorite, Amelia 
Amalek Peabody mysteries uh, with good humor, very light, very pleasant. So I am alternating it and I think I will be able to finish this book. And then, uh, what else I haven't finished? Then I haven't finished Vanity Fair. I am about 50% in. Is it the uh, famous English humor? I enjoy the humor very much. I quite enjoy it. Um, William McPhee's Thackeray, he mocks uh, English society and he tells about five young people, two girls, uh, two young women and uh, three young men that are trying to live in the society, society that they are trying to make their way up. It, he has a very pleasant style very light, kind of gentle, very pleasant way of talking to you. And he kind of, uh, I dropped my guard. I thought that nothing bad will happen in this book. And I'm 50% in. And I think that ahead of me some very grave parts. But I will finish it after I will finish uh, and Quiet Falls the Dawn. Well, that's all. Thank you for watching and sorry for the long rambly videos video and happy reading.